A month ago, the New York Times broke a bombshell story of sexual harassment and assault allegations against Harvey Weinstein. That set off a long overdue national conversation about sexual harassment in the workplace and beyond. The abuse of women, the shaming of them, the threatening, the retaliation, the silencing of them after the fact, it has to stop. The conversation has reverberated through the Oregon State Capitol, where two male lawmakers have been accused of inappropriately touching women, including fellow lawmakers. Tonight, a conversation with three women who combined have decades of service in the Oregon legislature. They discuss their personal experiences and where we go from here. From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. The allegations against Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein have sparked a nationwide discussion on sexual harassment and the treatment of women, and in some cases men. It seems nearly every day someone else is coming forward to say they were either harassed or abused by a person in power. That debate has spread from Hollywood to workplaces and state houses across the country. And a bombshell in Oregon's own capital, State Senator Sarah Gelser accused a fellow lawmaker, a Republican in the Senate, of touching her inappropriately over several years. And we learned this week complaints from two women were filed against another lawmaker, a Democrat in the House. Tonight, a roundtable discussion on sexual harassment. Joining me, Oregon State Senator Democrat Sarah Gelser. She represents Corvallis. Senator Gelser has served in the Oregon legislature since 2005. After serving in the House for nine years, she was elected to the Oregon Senate in 2015. She's the chair of the Senate Human Services Committee. Also joining us, Representative Julie Parrish. She is a state representative from House District 37, which serves the communities of West Lynn, Tualatin, Stafford, River Grove, Durham, and Merrillhurst. She was elected in 2010 and has served as the deputy leader for the House Republican Caucus. Also joining us, former state Senator Diane Rosenbaum, a Democrat who served in the legislature for 17 years in both the House and Senate, where she served as House Speaker and Senate President Pro Tem. Welcome to Straight Talk. It's really nice to have all of you here. Thanks for having me. Really us. appreciate it. I want to start with Senator Gelser because news of your complaints against Senator Cruz really shook the State House and sparked a conversation, a wider conversation in the State House and throughout Oregon. You accused Senator Jeff Cruz of Roseburg of touching you inappropriately over a period of years. Can you tell us more about what happened? Um, I can I can tell you about the process. There's still an investigation, a second investigation ongoing, and I don't want to influence that in any way. But um, it started when I was in the House. Uh, members move across, back and forth between between chambers. Uh, by the time I was in the Oregon State Senate, uh, I I made a complaint. I, I guess we call it a, a formal, an informal report uh, because it was continuing to make me uncomfortable. It was um, changing my uh, way that I moved through the building, the way that I used elevators. Uh, I was asking for a change in the way that I was assigned to, to sit in committees. Uh, and I had had people intervene by that point who had noticed the behavior and, and asked if I was okay. So that investigation happened. At that time, I learned there were others that had made similar complaints. Uh, he, the behavior was described to him and he was told that he was not to touch women period, in the building. Um, the behavior continued. I filed another complaint, and what has unfolded has unfolded. Um, again, I'm not wanting to talk in specifics about what happened, but um, to clarify, yes, the investigators have been given the, the details of that. That's who needs to know what that is, and it is not a complaint about a hug or anything that should be vague um, or unclear to anyone. It is inappropriate behavior that no one should be subjected to in the workplace. Not me and not the other women that I've witnessed receive that same behavior. Let me uh, read Senator Cruz's response to that. Uh, Cruz has denied groping or sexually harassing women and says he's being denied due process because he's being denied access to any of the specifics of, of your allegations. And he told the Oregonian, I have never done anything that I believe anybody could portray as being sexual and it's never been my intention and never will be. Do you have any response to that? Uh, my response is that I experienced what I experienced. I work in a male-dominated profession. I work with many men, and I have made two complaints about only one man in that, in that time. 
The first complaint you mentioned was in March of 2016. Correct. Then recently, uh, you made another complaint, and it, was, it started with a tweet. Can you tell us about that? Uh, that that actually started, and it get, really gets to the bigger issue. The issue of sexual harassment in the workplace is a very significant one. Uh, in politics, we banter back and forth a lot. We banter on Facebook. We banter on Twitter. We say things that are sometimes a little bit ridiculous. Uh, the Senate Republican um, communications director said something about how I had taken money from Harvey Weinstein. I actually hadn't. Uh, you can go look at my CNEs. I haven't, but it, it just continued through the day. And what made me very frustrated was that we were politicizing and making light of something that is a very significant problem in the place that I work that women throughout our building have talked to me about that I have personally struggled with, lost sleep over, and to me, that was not funny. If I was being accused of protecting Harvey Weinstein, the only person that I had ever gone out of my way to not publicize was a member of the, the caucus um, whose communications director was coming after me. I did not intend for Senator Cruz's name to become public at that point. I've used the process, which says you just want the behavior to stop. Uh, that did not happen. Representative Gomberg has been mentioned. Um, as you heard in that process, someone used the same process. Someone went and talked to him. He immediately ceased the behavior. And nobody has complained since then. If that had happened when I initially made the complaint in 2016, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. The goal was simply for the behavior to stop, for me to be able to sit at my desk, to attend a committee, to get in an elevator, and not, um, not experience what I was experiencing. Let's bring in Representative Julie Parrish and Senator uh, Diane Rosenbaum. Uh, I want to read a quote. This, one, this quote is from you, uh, Senator Gelser, that you told OPB because you said after you went public with this, you got a lot of a reaction from a lot of women in the State House describing similar inappropriate behavior. And this is what you told OPB that that behavior included being touched too long, having a hand on your thigh above or below your skirt in what someone believes is just a friendly way, a hand around the shoulder where the fingers are going beneath your shirt, having someone pull you too close, a hand that's lingering on your lower back, or someone talking to you so closely that your ear is wet when you pull away. Let me ask uh, Senator Rosenbaum and Representative Parrish, have you heard about this kind of behavior, witnessed it, experienced it yourself? Can you tell us some of the things that you've heard about? Let's start with Senator Rosenbaum. Well, I think that this kind of behavior is pervasive, and it's not just in the state capitol. Unfortunately, we know this is happening from the White House to the State House in Salem, but also in corporate boardrooms, in fast food restaurants, in the media. The Harvey Weinstein thing has clearly brought this out in the open, and that's why I really applaud my friend Sarah Gelser and my friend Julie Parrish for standing up and calling out the problem of sexual harassment, which to me is part of a problem of inequality in the workplace. Now, there was a letter that both Julie and Sarah signed saying this is a problem here in Salem, just as it is in other workplaces, and over 160 women who work as legislators or as lobbyists or as staff people in our state capitol signed it, people of all political persuasions. So it's not a partisan issue. It is pervasive. And here in 2017, we need to do more to make it safe for women in the workplace. That's a letter um, that's also being signed in California at the assembly there, also in Illinois. We're hearing about lawmakers, nine women lawmakers in Washington state, also saying that they um, have experienced sexual harassment. Let me hear from Representative Parrish and, and your thoughts about this. Well, a couple things. Um, you know, I have not experienced what Sarah has uh, with Senator Cruz or with, I serve with Representative Gomberg and have not seen that as well. I, I think there's a couple problems here. One is, I don't think particularly between members that that process is as clear as it needs to be for we're all independently elected. Uh, so what is that process and how do we make sure that um, it's enforceable? Uh, and in two different situations, you had two different sort of outcomes uh, in terms of what enforcement looked like. So I think that, that we, we need more clarity in the building. Um, I think my struggle is, is our own legislative council is experiencing a gender discrimination lawsuit right now. So I think we're going to need that clarity from outside the building. And I think that um, Representative Kotek, Speaker Kotek, took a very good first step in saying we're going to get some outside help. Uh, I think we need that in the building. And, and to me, that's really important. So independent. Independent uh, of anybody company. in the building, because this isn't just a member to member issue. It's not, it's, it happens with staff. It happens sometimes with women who I, I've heard and see things that are inappropriate. I think it is, um, I think we need some boundaries. And I think we need to figure out what those boundaries are and accept that that is our workplace. Um, you know, particularly for lobbyists, they're actually, we, we hate, you know, we hate lobbyists, right? They're, we 
have like a four-letter word. They're members of the public. They should be able to come in and not experience um, any kind of overt uh, uh, or even kind of under the, 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 the tension of underneath the surface of um, men making implications about who they well, are, who they sleep with. Obviously, it's a particular with. problem, right? Because they um, have to build relationships. One lobbyist was quoted in the Oregonian as saying she thought to be successful, she had to be one of the good old boys and be thought of as a <clears throat> woman who could take a joke. Yep. So that, that's a, a particular problem. And Representative Parrish, you've talked about um, how being a forceful woman, mm -hmm. also you've been called names oh, because yeah. of that. So that's a whole different type of harassment. And it is, and that's more what I've experienced is just, you know, if you're a woman, a woman in pro, you know, politics, then my quote was, you know, you're crazy or you're a word that rhymes with witch, right? Like that's how we get defined uh, if we're assertive to have um, some of our nonpartisan staff allegedly, allegedly say that, you know, um, some female lawmakers are difficult. I mean, that undermines our ability to get work done. And what I've seen and experienced too, you know, while we, while we have more women now in the House than we've had ever, um, men still largely have the gavels. They largely control the committees. On the House, there are 15 policy committees. There are only four of them are chaired by women. I watch male chairs when you're asking people lines of questioning shut women down for, you know, asking questions, and then they move to somebody else who then sort of just wants to be more collegial or, you know, look like we're having fun in committee instead of really doing what we're there, which is to ask the hard questions to get work done. And I've seen men, male law, lawmakers, shut women down in committees that way. So to me, my, what I have experienced is the undermining of my ability to get work done. Governor Brown has said, talking about sexual abuse and harassment, it's all too clear that no workplace, back to your point, Senator Rosenbaum, or community is immune to sexual harassment, sadly, even in our state capitol. It is long past time for these issues to be openly discussed and directly addressed. But one thing that's interesting is the Oregon State House has more women in leadership than anywhere in the country. We have a female governor, female attorney general, um, House Speaker Kotek. We have a woman, a Senate Majority Leader, and House Majority Leader. How has it been able to be so pervasive in the Oregon State House when we have so many women in power? Senator Gelser. I, I think, again, it's about the way that it's pervasive in our culture. One of the, the great, most damaging myths that keeps people from speaking up is this idea that women that respect themselves or women that are powerful or women that are strong won't experience these things. I've certainly had people ask me that. They're like, well, you're really tough in committee. How could this have happened to you? Didn't you just say, get your hands off me, and then it would and then it would have stopped. Th this happens to women, whether they, they can be a, a senator, they can be a server in a restaurant, they can be a bus driver. It doesn't matter what your place of work is, you have the right to go there and um, not be touched, not be sexually objectified, and not be told that you don't have a sense of humor if you don't want somebody's hand on your thigh or tongue in your ear. I mean, th to me, those are just basic issues. It doesn't matter who is con in control. The issue is that we still have many ways that um, we look at women that are different than the ways that we look at men. And I think for women to speak up, we often go through in our minds, I know that I, I did this in my own situation. Am I being overly sensitive? I don't want to cause him any problems. I don't want to embarrass him. I don't want to cause any trouble. Maybe I shouldn't worry about this. What eventually drove me was seeing it happen to other women and knowing that I had a responsibility to them. What I can't do and what I hope comes out of this is those women that, that Cinder Rosenbaum is talking about, if they are working in that coffee shop, if they are working in that mail room, that they know that they can speak up, that there are laws that protect them, and that they don't have to choose between being safe not being harassed and putting shoes on their kids' feet and paying their rent every month because that is the real threat and fear that women all across the state face every day in the workplace. Yes. Senator Roosevelt, you were in leadership. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is, I think Oregon is a model in many ways, having many, many women in positions of power. I just want to say, though, that I think men need to take their share of responsibility for this problem. You know, we need to call out bad behavior and men need to think about it when they see bad behavior. I think we've got some great male colleagues that do that, but this it's not as if the problem is one to be solved just by having more women elected, which we should do, but men need to also step up to the plate and say, you know, I don't want my daughter, I don't want my colleague to be treated this way, and when I see it happening, I'm going to stop it. I'm going to say something. So I think we all share in that.
And we have male colleagues that, that are like that. Um, two of the best phone calls that I received after um, this all occurred were from uh, male Senate Republicans, one of whom said, I'm so sorry this happened. What can I do? What can I do to help make our workplace safer for all of the women that are in the building? That's really what it takes to um, come up with a solution. It's not a partisan issue, it's not a gender issue, it's a workplace issue. And everyone that can come together to make sure that the issue is nobody has to say get your hands off me because nobody starts with the assumption that they have their right the right to put their hands on somebody else's body to start with. Governor Brown uh, spoke to your point too, Senator Rosenbaum. She said this is really a culture change. We all play a role. We can't expect the culture to change by relying just on women. Men have to step up too. I, I want to, we've talked about um, Representative Gomberg and I, I want to talk a little bit about that a second lawmaker, a Democrat um, from the Central Coast who is apologizing for inappropriate behavior. House Speaker Tina Kotek said she received complaints from two women about Gomberg. The situation Situation, as you said, was resolved uh, to the satisfaction of those who made the complaints. And Gomberg told the Oregonian the complaints against him were for um, inappropriate humor, inappropriate touching, invasion of personal space, and hugging. He apologized and said he was humiliated that the news became public. And I want to read you part of the letter of apology. I come from a family a business environment and in fact a generation where hugging is normal and generally appreciated. But different people, different cultures and different age groups have different standards. Etiquette changes over time. This new era of people coming forward is bringing a better awareness of how actions that were intended innocently may be understood as having an uncomfortable or unwelcome impact. I hope we will all be better off because of this increased sensitivity. Do you have any thoughts about that? Is, is, it, is it a boundary issue? Senator Cruz is saying he thinks it's more of a boundary issue. Any response to that? Well, I think that, um, I mean, I come from a Middle Eastern family where everybody hugs and everybody kisses and I'm a hugger. So, um, you know, so I have to sort of look at my own um, experience in the Capitol and go, wait a minute, maybe I've made somebody uncomfortable and, and didn't know it. Um, and so I think that, uh, I, I think we do serve with a lot of older men in the Capitol. When I was elected, I was the youngest woman that year in the building, and there were men who were old enough to be my grandfather in serving with us. And so I do think there is sort of that generational piece, but that doesn't still excuse the behavior. And, you know, uh, you know, for Representative Gomberg, you know, there are apparently two incidents over a period of two years uh, where those issues came out. And, um, you know, I don't know how much corrective action it takes. One should be enough. What is appropriate what, for me in, in a relationship with somebody and experiencing might have, Sarah might have a different comfort level with that. Um, but I think we have to start at a base uh, threshold that says, just keep your hands off folks in, in, in the building, right? I mean, and wait until somebody init is willing to initiate that kind of uh, relationship. If somebody comes up and hugs me, it doesn't put me at ease because I just grew up that way, but it might put somebody else at ease and you have to, uh, you can't discount Sarah's experience. Thank and you. I would say mm -hmm. in no case should somebody be putting their hand on someone's thigh, putting their mouth in somebody's Absolutely. ear, putting their hand under somebody's shirt, lifting up somebody's skirt. Those things are- That's not a boundary are, issue. That is not, yeah. a, that is not a boundary <laughs> issue. Right. That, is a, that is an absolute issue that one should never assume is comfortable. And when in doubt, ask. If I hug a colleague, I ask first. I had a colleague that, that lost someone very close to him. I said, Senator, may I give you a hug? And he said yes, and then I did. But I would not do that without asking first. Senator, Representative, we need to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue. We'll talk about that Me Too campaign that was sparked by the Harvey Weinstein uh, situation. We'll be right back. We'll be back in two minutes.